I started like most people, I as a buyer. I remember when we were growing up, I was telling my people at the table that uh, I am a Chags Moto <laughs> from the village. And uh, uh, my father, the piece of land that as a family we have is one acre, very steep and very narrow. And uh, my mother used to tell us after form four, when you finish this place, go and never come back. I mean, where the Kabisa Usirudi Apa? The reason was, uh, you could see my cousins encroaching on that border and was saying, if all of us, we are four sons, if all of us now come back and encroach on the same, so she was encouraging us to have beings of our own. And I remember when we left, right now nobody is at home. So we started by buying. And you know, sir, the way you would ask, do you buy a car or do you buy a lad first? I mean, those questions usually come when you are newly employed. And that was not a question because for us, you had to start by buying land because you have nothing to go back to. Uh, so we started by buying land. I remember my past parcel of land. Those days, you'd have those guys giving papers along um, Fagano Street in Nairobi and those streets, and they would give you papers uh, selling land. That time, at Ukora Miki. Because I remember when I bought that land, I didn't know these guys at all, at all. And I went. I had saved about 150,000, withdrew and, and bought that in Tsiokimau. And uh, how also did I buy that land in Tsiokimau? I remember when Mulaloko was being, it was shared actually, it was like squatters. And uh, the first guys to buy those plots in Mulaloko in the early 2000, they were buying them for 500 shillings. Actually not even buying, 500 bob. They were, you see those trucks, the sad trucks, how oh, the conductors, how oh, Makaka, they were the ones who were given that land and they would just sell immediately for 500. And then it came to 1,000 bob, it came to 3,000 bob, and then 15,000. A friend of mine called me when they were at 15,000. And uh, he told me, you know what, there are some plots being sold here. I have booked two for you and I have booked three for myself. He knew I could afford. But, uh, I never bought them. I remember later on when he, I came to buy what I have, where I put up my house, he sold those plots, two of them, and bought an acre. Me, I had to go to a circle in order to, in order to buy what I have. And then I realized, okay, so when you see this thing is real, the next time he called me for a, for a property, I was working in Mombasa. And even before I went to view, I had already sent the down payment because I could see how things were coming up. <clears throat> but like, that one was uh, just like everyone else, you're buying a plot for your own. But now, getting into real estate itself, I was working in Kisumu in 07. You remember the crashes, eh? And I had just gone for holiday, I mean, uh, uh, December holidays. And that's when I did my wedding, I remember. And then the post-election came and uh, we had a one-year renewable contracts, and mine had just ended in December. Now I'm here, I'm new remarried, my house is in Kisumu, we can't go back there, you can't go looking for a place to stay with your wife, isn't it? Before you can be hosted by your brother or a cousin, but now you are a family man. And uh, uh, you remember those gifts you are given during the wedding? Eh? You remember those gifts? Eh? The best one, I, even today, I value is that bed. You know that bed they give the lady as a gift. And then I look, I saw, I saw that it, everything of ours was in Kisumu. So I'm looking, we have a bed here. Uh, we used to shop in Nakumat when we were in Kisumu. So we had those uh, boca points. And so this could buy Meko. So, and uh, after paying all our debts, we realized we had 15,000. We went and took a Kasigoru. I know how, this, is a, this is a story I've never shared, but that's how we started. We took a, 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 a one a Sigoru, 2,000 for rent, 2,000 for deposit, 2,000 for electricity. Half of it is done, isn't it? Uh, and uh, the rest we bought a few things, and we were given like a TV. Anyway, that's how we started. Now, the network I had built, because when I was in Kisumu, we used to come to Kitegera. 
and they, I already had bought some lard and it was very nice. And so those guys would come and say, we would want lard like this. So when now I, I didn't have any employment, things were tough, guys were trying to get a place that was more secure. Uh, Kitegera Kajeto area was considered as a secure place. So my friend used to uh, started asking me if they could get lard. And I remember this muse that had told the one for me, told me, you know what, why don't you get those guys you are working with and make them to buy that from us and you'll get a commission. So the first commission I get, I got was 5,000. And I thought it was a lot of money. Remember, I was coming from a very good job. I think I was, I was earning over 100,000. But now, there's no job. And there's no hope for a job in the near future because of the, the chaos was still ongoing. And uh, we got the first job, and I got 5,000, and I felt, I hope that he's being paid. You know, when he, was, when he was selling to me, he never told me you can get paid. So I think even when I took my friends to him, he used to get the commission. But now he realized he need to help this guy. In short, I'm saying, I entered into real estate by being thrown into the deep end. You know, you are told now, swim or sink. And then you, you, where you don't sit and agree today, you are starting in real estate. What I would say, like when we were sharing, is that many, thing, many times, even in business, people buy you and how you portray yourself. When we started, those guys, I was in middle management by then. So most of those guys, my friends, the network I had, were people who could access loans, who could, I mean, get some money, but they didn't know how to focus, what to do in life. Yet they saw me, a very young man then, uh, a very, my piece of land was quite big, was almost half a, I mean three quarters of an acre, and I, have a, I had a nice car then. Eh? And they would say, how do we get to where you are? So by consulting me, and now I've already gone into real estate now as a, 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 as a means of making money. That's how the, you are able to get the first buyers. And uh, like someone was saying, or you started selling cars, now, getting the next crime, the next crime, those charities even up to date, they are there. So, some of these areas, you find that God also, in a way, works in a way that he puts you in the right place at the right time. Because I believe I was in Kajiado at the right time and in the right place. So, after that, we sold our first property. In fact, that property, I have kept it for 14 years. It's 14 years since then. And I said, this was my first one. Those days you could get plots for 150, 200, 300. So the moment you put a deposit, and I started like that, buying retro by retro. So by the time we broke, I mean the partnership, usually partnership at some, at some time. By the time it ended, I had bought a few. And I thought that the best thing to do, which I do until now, is buying my own properties and selling my own properties because you remember that name of brokering was really hitting my head eh? so i added into that and now i buy properties first before i sell i have i, I mean i buy large chunks of land then some divided so that's how i started or i went into real estate the other thing i would say is that the most important when i <coughs> joined real estate i went with zero capital have I mentioned any money there? Zero. Zero as in the capital was you. And it was you because these are the people you know. So as you interact with people at your young age, in your workplace, in our Mount Kenya, we have a saying that says, eh? I don't know, I don't know, That means that people are wealth. What would you marry? See you? So it's what sometimes you start with what you know to what you don't know. So you might look at it and say, I don't have any money, isn't it? Or, but there are people you know who can spread the word. If you, if you listen to that story of uh, Terry and uh, Caroline there, Caroline, I mean, Terry went with a problem. The problem solving became a business idea for Caroline, isn't it? So sometimes, I, that's why I'm saying when you are open-minded, every time you are open-minded, you look at all the situation and what, has this become a business item? But what I would say is that in real estate, the most important thing is honesty. Honesty from the work, honesty throughout. Because 
you deal with a lot of money. Given a 10,000 shilling, is a lot of money for that person. Maybe that person has saved that money for a long time, isn't it? To get that uh, 10 shilling, 100 shilling, a million shilling. So, and because this business is one business that uh, uh, you, I mean, the amount of money is involved are large. If you don't have your own personal discipline, you will not make it. The other one is integrity. Those two, in fact, uh, when we are talking about people buying you, is they have a history. The, the moment you make one mistake, you know, they say that fire burns faster than the truth, isn't it? So always be very honest for those who will get into that. Be honest. If you are making 10 shillings, be satisfied with that 10 shillings. If you are making a shilling, be satisfied. There is another day. So in real estate, you can make money. The other thing is to look at the seasons. What seasons are we in? What is the business environment? Is this season to invest in real estate? Because again, also real estate, you also have to use the right strategies. Is this the right season? Is this the right location? All those things. 